Next thing I'd like to talk about is how strings work in C++. Um, we're going to take a look at how C strings work, which is technically actually an array of characters. So a single character, of course, is like this, char, some name, and then in single quotes, you have a single character. So if I print that out to the command line, we get the single character that comes out. Now, if you want multiple characters, you end up having to deal with a char array. So the way you do arrays in C++ is you give the type, the name, and then afterwards you give the size. This is Java. Normally what you would do is you'd actually put it on the type. Uh, in C++, you put it on the name of the variable. So this uh, sets a side space for five chars. And basically what's going on is that there are five consecutive pieces of memory, each the size of a char, that are actually set up. So if I read things into this, so this is one way to read things in. I can read into this string, and then we'll try printing out what str has inside of it. So now I'm going to need that character. Save it. So enter in high. It puts it in. Now there's a key piece of information here that you need to know. What ends up happening is that each of the characters is read in, and there is one extra character that's put in. The extra character is called a null uh, string or terminating string or null character. So basically a backslash zero, that character right there, is a special one that's put at the end after it reads things in. And basically what's going on is that C out keeps on reading characters until it sees that thing. So why does that matter? Well, let's take a look at another example. So str2 with five characters in it. So I'll read an str, and then I'll read an str2. I'll put the string, and then I'll try out putting string2. So let's just say that I actually put in more than just the five. So put in a whole bunch of A's in, that should have gone into string. Put a whole bunch of B's in, that should go into string two. Notice that when I print out the original string, it is printing out this much. What happened is that it actually, t when C++ compiled it and ran it, it happened to put string right after string two in memory. And so when I ran string two and read more than five characters in, it overwrote the memory after that, which happened to overwrite this string right here. Isn't that nasty? So uh, C++ never checks for out-of-bounds errors, ever. It just lets you go ahead and do that. So if you keep on going, it will just print out, or just uh, read in over the top of any characters after that. And the same is actually true of printing out. If you forget to put in a null terminating character, uh, CN does it for you, but if you're messing with arrays and put them in, it is entirely possible that it will just keep on printing things out until it finds a null character. And if that's not in the string you created, it'll just keep on going through whatever's after that. So watch out for that. That's a nasty little thing that ends up happening. Now one thing that I should mention real quick is that, um, so let's go ahead and set this to like 20 and 20. So if I save this, So, hello there. Notice that when I read this in, if it gets white space, it thinks that that is the end of that particular read-in from CN. So actually, when it did the CN, it kept going until it found white space, which in this case is a space rather than the return. So put that in and then put in the second word in the second read-in. So if you want to read in things that include spaces, you actually have to use a slightly different command. And that's where cn.get comes in. There's also a get line command that also might be of interest to you, which you might go look up. So if you do cn.get, and then you put in a number, this will keep reading until it reads 20 characters. Um, so let's see, kill that, kill that.
So now if I put this in, notice it actually does the whole thing all in one. There's another one. So this basically by default keeps going until there's a return. You can manually put that in as well. So this means the same thing, but I could change this to like a tab or a space or whatever I wanted. So there's another command that reads until a character. Um, it keeps on reading until it's one less than that number, by the way. So this will actually read in 19 characters because it automatically puts in space for that null terminating character at the end. Now, one thing you got to watch out for is it doesn't get rid of that particular character at the end. There's still a return sitting in CN. So it keeps going until it reads that, but then it just leaves it there. What I have to do in order to get rid of it is I've got to do one extra get in order to eat that return. So basically kill that particular return. Another way to deal with it is a while loop where you do cn.get and say it's not equal to a return. Similar idea. Um, OK, so that get allows us to get characters in, get multiple sizes. Um, you have to put in the size of the string you're going to deal with, so um, watch out for that. Now, what happens if you actually want to compare things? So let's say that you have a string copy. So how do I copy one string into another? Well, you could manually copy one character at it over from one side to the other. But actually, there's a, another include that's um, pretty useful, which is in string.h. So there's a string compare in here. So strcmp. And what you do is you take your first array and your second array and compare them. So if I go back to this str220 example, str220, and I better comma 20, and I better make sure I kill the return on each of these. Otherwise, it will read that in as the next string. Um, so how, what if I want to see if these two are the same? So string compare is what you want to use, str, cmp. And then what you do is you do str and str2. Now, usually you would want to use this in if statement. So what this does is it actually adds up the letters in each one. And if they are exactly the same, this will equal 0. So if you're using true and false, that actually equals false, strangely enough. Um, but this is like the subtraction. So when you take the calculation of this minus this, what do you get? So it'll either be negative, equal, or positive, depending on which one has more letters. So that's a way that you can compare them. What about if you want to copy them? So strcpy is an another way to deal with this. So you can copy from one to another. Now watch out, you cannot just say str equals str2. What this means is this thing is now pointing to exactly the same memory slot as this one. So besides being a memory leak, which we'll get to later, this also means that these two are actually referring to the same spot in memory. So if I change str2, I get s and I'm changing str. So they're not in separate memory slots. I'd be changing them individually. So that's actually not a copy. That's actually changing them to the same spot in memory. This allows me to do memory copy, where it goes, creates uh, a whole new string. Now, one thing that we're going to be working on in Palindrome is um, copying everything over from one string to another. So an example might be to basically walk through a string and move each individual character one at a time. So you're allowed to do that using the square brackets. Um, so for arrays, let's do a for loop, I guess. And i is 0, i is less than, let's see, 20 in this case. i plus plus. Watch out. Remember that c++ is not going to check your arrays out of bounds. So. So if I just read in the first string, I can do something like this. str2i equals str i. 
Well, maybe let's have an integer, which is a counter, which is keeping track. I should set that to 0, because remember, C++ doesn't initialize things to 0 by default. And I can do something like, if that particular one is not equal to the null character. Now, this is actually not right. I'm on purpose not giving you the right answer. But something like this will be, while you haven't found a null character, copy it over to here. And I can do count plus plus, or I can do that on a separate line. I could do it in the same line. And think about why that is. So if that's the case, then um, copy the number over. And otherwise, keep going. Now, you could do something like checking for letters and whatnot. And by the way, there are things that check for letters and digits. So look up uh, methods for those in string. Um, if I keep going and forget to copy the null uh, character over, that's actually a real problem. So let's see what I get if I just print this out afterwards. So I'm going to print out str, and I'll print out str2. So I no longer need that line, or that line, or that line. str2 is not declared in the scope. Ah, yes. I still need to create it, don't I? That's not going to work. Recompile. There we go. So let's say I say, hello there. So what is all this garbage? Well, so you remember how if C out doesn't uh, stop until it finds a null terminating character? Since str2, it just hands me some memory. And it's just like, OK, here you go. Here's 20 characters. I don't care what's in there. Have a good time. Um, if I don't copy the null terminal terminating character over, what will happen is it'll just keep copying over hello there, which it did up to here. And then, since there's no null, null terminating character when I print out str2, it just keeps on printing until it finds one. And it looks like it had to go all the way till it found str before it found a terminating character. So it just kept on printing whatever this is. This is all just garbage characters, largely. So make sure when you are dealing with C strings, you use the null terminating character. All right, hopefully that will get you started on the palindrome.